Hello, welcome to my basement here in Colorado. I am, of course, wearing my shirt that I got while I was in Uganda at the missions conference there. So, uh, get to see me a little snazzed up, I guess, with winter here, or it's really cold outside. A little snuffy nose, but I think I'll be fine to do this will be lecture B. Uh, this will be another whiteboard lecture. I'll be explaining a couple of things. I thought I would do uh, two separate lectures, but I think I'll combine them because I'm basically doing some of the same things and uh, trying to illustrate uh, some of the things, same things. So um, let me start with what I do to show sin and righteousness and describe uh, mercy and grace uh, from a little different angle and give you a, uh, something of an understanding of that as well. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> uh, illustrations, two different illustrations, but I'll just start with the first and uh, we'll get ourselves going today. Uh, God bless you, by the way. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being attentive and learning God's Word. And we'll be making progress in teaching what little I know uh, and helping you understand uh, more about these biblical concepts. When I was in math years ago, we learned a math line. I think many of you will have remembered this. When you first get to know uh, negative numbers, they would teach you that on the math line, uh, these would be the positive numbers, and moving forward and beyond, uh, on out, is the positive numbers, to basically they would talk about infinity, but. and then they would teach you about the negative numbers. The negative numbers start here, and theoretically negative numbers, uh, are in reality negative numbers don't exist Negative numbers are for accounting purposes, because we have to subtract. And of course, if you have four apples, you can subtract three, but there's no such thing as three negative apples. But I think we uh, kind of get the, the concept of negative, uh, that it's not good. Uh, when we're talking about godly things, uh, we would put Satan over here. And we would put Jesus over here. So this would be uh, the two polar differences. And uh, they would be um, something in the middle would be hopefully us at some point. And I want to explain that. Um, but we are caught back here. Uh, at some point, um, sin has pushed us in this direction, and we are heading in the wrong way, and God begins to work on us. There's something else, there's a different force that begins to play in our life, and it's called grace. Uh, grace begins to push on us this way. Grace begins to challenge us and tell us from God's perspective that there is a better way to go. And so grace is pushing on us, and so here it finds us, and I'm just as just relative, because some people are closer, <laughs> probably way closer over here, but I just want to give us the, the idea that we're somewhere in here. So grace begins to push on us, and we begin to have, um, we begin to think that, that this, God stuff and this Jesus stuff is is good for us, and so we accept Christ into our life. So this is our point of salvation. This is where grace has been working on us, and this is where we are saved. Mercy, now then, mercy takes over, and automatically it forgives us all of our sins. It takes away all, it doesn't take away the damage. Obviously, that's a restorative process that has to be done throughout our lives. But grace begins 
I mean, mercy, mercy gets us to forgiveness, it takes away all our sins. It empties us. I mean, we're totally empty when we are saved, empty of all this bad stuff that we have done because we're totally forgiven by the blood of Jesus. But that's as far as mercy can get us. That's as far as this is the cross. This is the cross of Jesus. <clears throat> this is his saving grace is involved with this too. But that's as far as it can take us. Is it justification? Um, let me let me do that here. Uh, justification means just as if I'd never sinned. It means just as if I had never sinned. That all of it is erased, all of it is gone. Like I said, you're empty of all this bad stuff. But we need, we want to get more like Jesus. How are we going to get further along? I would say that the church has stuck here. The church is basically, we're, we're the mercy people. Uh, we are focused on the cross we are focused on Jesus' death and his shed blood. Um, every Lord's Supper communion that we take, uh, we focus on this part in our elements. So, but how do we get over here? This is righteousness. Forgive my writing, but... We get the point. This is righteousness. This is good. This is the good stuff. I would even dare to say the holy stuff. As we begin to participate in the things of Jesus and God continues to add to our lives, how do we get from, from now, mercy's got us here, now grace is involved still. Grace has been involved all along, but grace is still involved in getting us here, but grace is what takes us even further. I hope this dynamic teaches us the power of grace is to get us into all this good stuff with Jesus. This is what I've been trying to say about the church has been focused on getting us not to do all this bad stuff. And you'll notice in my lectures and you'll notice in my material that instead I focus on getting us to do the good stuff, getting us to, to live righteously and making the right decisions and good decisions. This would be wisdom. <laughs> this would be foolishness. And God wants us to get into all the good stuff to where we're not thinking about as much, we're not as focused on, and yes, there's we're, we're to be saying no to bad things, but we're to be saying yes, 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 yes to the powerful things of God and the good stuff. So this is the difference between mercy and the cross. Um, the grace is, I like to symbolize it this way. I don't know if you see the stone and the empty tomb <laughs> been rolled away, but this is the resurrection symbol that I would like to have eventually on our logo. I just don't know how to do that for our Bible college because this is the resurrection of Jesus is the powerful power of God in grace that we live for Christ in just strong, strong ways. And this changes our lives to make us more and more like Jesus because we don't want to be like this guy. <laughs> this guy's a loser. This guy's the winner. This is, when they talk about being on the right side of history, we're on the right side of history. Jesus is going to win. Jesus is going to return. And praise God when I talk again about warming. Mercy is warming. It's like we're in an ice state with sin. Mercy warms us so that we are water. And, and grace takes us and makes us red hot makes us boiling for Jesus and continues to warm us. But mercy can only get us so far, and then grace has to take us the rest of the way. So that's 
uh, for the first part of my lecture. And I hope that has encouraged you and blessed you. And now I want to do another kind of similar illustration and show you some things that, why I say that uh, the wisdom material has an eschatological element or it has a, a future uh, element to it. And this will be uh, kind of introduce some of that for us now. So again, we have our, our line, our, now this is a timeline. So this is be a little different line. So we got creation. Creation takes place here of the physical realm I'm talking about. Um, down the road, we have the flood. About 1,500 years later, we have the flood uh, with Noah and the earth being flooded and all living things dying except what were on the ark. And then we have uh, here, we have Jesus. I could do, you know, Abraham's close to the flood. Moses is in here 1,500 years before would be Moses. And then we have some other things of the kings and stuff. I talk about King David and uh, King Solomon. And then eventually the Jesus comes onto the picture. And at this point, things change. Uh, this would be what we. This would be the uh, the Old Testament and uh, what was experienced there. And <coughs> excuse me. And during this time, I can make this, but I want it to be more gradual, because during Moses, it does take a big jump up, Abraham a big jump up, but basically what they're doing during all of this, don't take this as the cross, this is adding, adding to our salvation, I'll add a little bit here to make it look more like a cross, but Jesus, when he came, just continue just really changed everything all of the momentum just really took just went sky high this is uh, a dynamic change that took place because of Jesus the Old Testament was basically focused on the physical the New Testament now what I'm illustrating here after Jesus this timeline as we have moved forward um, we're no longer just adding little bits of material through the Old Testament we're now multiplying I mean it's just that multiplication is is mentioned many times in the New Testament and that's what I think is happening uh, in the New Testament as well it's just the the amount of gain that we have information wise has just multiplied because of Jesus. Uh, this was focused on the physical in the Old Testament. The New Testament is now focused on the spiritual. And all of the gain for us now is that we are gaining in godliness. We're gaining in the things of God. And therefore, the spiritual is the focus of this. Uh, you remember the Jews wanted the physical kingdom in Israel and do to dominate Rome. Uh, and that continued to be their focus. And they rejected Jesus because he was offering a spiritual kingdom. And this is the kingdom that we dwell in now. Uh, the kingdom of God. The kingdom where Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. But Jesus will return some point we think that is happening soon that that will be taking place uh, hopefully momentarily you may never get this lecture because Jesus would have returned by then but Jesus returns and things take another dynamic change again and um, let me just go back for a second this was 4,000 years This is 2,000 years, 
And then this next thing that we talk about in the millennium, let me just use the symbol, the M, the millennium, is 1,000 years. Uh, if you want to do the math here, it's basically, it's just the, uh, seven weeks of years. Or a thousand years is as a day to the Lord. And when we combine these, we have one week of God's economy. This is God's reversal of sin plan. If we want to describe it that way, that's how I describe it in my second yet unpublished book. That this is God's plan to remove sin from our world. And it is happening gradually as the hearts and minds of men and women around the world are being engaged by Christ and we're getting fed up with sin and its impact. We're getting in, fed up with death. And therefore we're becoming more and more godly people. And there are more and more godly people on this earth right now than there's ever been in the entire history of mankind. Uh, the earth, as I continue to talk about, are warming. Uh, spiritually, this is warming our planet and we are becoming more like Jesus. But it's thousand years, it just takes an exponential, and I know I do add, multiply, but now, I don't know if you've gotten into exponents, but I'm saying this is 10 to the X power, just, it's just a dynamite thing that when Jesus is here physically with us, things just change on this planet for the better. And the millennium, it will be a powerful time and again, Jesus will be here, and we'll be able to actually go and ask Jesus questions because he'll be physically in Jerusalem. He may travel. <laughs> Won't that be exciting? Uh, Jesus is coming to your community. Um, and so uh, the other uh, thing that I wanted to show you is this is the physical focus in the Old Testament, the spiritual focus for these 2,000 years, for this 1,000 years. Wisdom is the focus. And this is the exciting thing about the future, is that wisdom, Jesus himself being the wisdom of God being with us, but wisdom will be the focus. And if you look, of course, this is, the, uh, this is exactly the opposite of the creation order, as wisdom was created first in the spiritual realm, and heaven and the angels were created second, and then lastly, this physical realm. So this is where I've seen this pattern before and can fill in these blanks because we, we understand what has uh, been taking place. We can see that this is going to be just a... Uh, the future is going to be an awesome time of wisdom and godly growth as sin. Uh, by the end of all of this, uh, sin is totally removed. Sin is done with. And this will be what I like to call the age of sin. And then sin will be totally behind us as we get past the millennium. And uh, this will, um, as I've said before, too, sin has um, exposed that God is just, merciful, and gracious. And we continue to encounter <laughs> sin in our own personal lives, and we continue to do our part to be as righteous and as godly as we can be. And we are really looking forward to what Jesus wants to do here. I think of our, um, you know, we're, we're about right in here right now, and that God is, and I'm not trying to give a gap there, because I think Jesus can't come back, and he can come back in any time, and we're looking forward to Jesus returning. But what I'm doing is just making it clear that the glory drops for the future. Um, wisdom, wisdom being the future and worship. I mean, already we're seeing worship in our churches just explode as people acknowledge God and come into the presence of God and let God know how much we appreciate Him and how much we really, really respect and honor Him that wisdom and worship are just going to continue to exp explode. Um, the things that 
are put behind us when we think of what is God offering that replaces the pleasures of sin. If I'm back on my old diagram of the uh, negatives, worship. Worship is just powerful and draws us closer and closer to God and draws us in to become wiser and draws us in just to engage God in a spiritual way. And I don't know how to explain this change as far as what it will mean um, of wisdom, but I think as we get there, it'll obviously all make sense. But I hope you enjoyed those uh, two illustrations, and I hope that they've been a blessing to your life. Continue to gain, continue to grow, uh, continue to be more and more like Jesus. I'm going to do my part to teach you, uh, but I hope you are doing your part to study God's Word, to read God's Word, uh, to spend time with God, and God will continue to grow you to be the most godly person you can be. And to continue on that path, because I'm telling you, it's a good path. <laughs> it's a good thing to be more and more like Jesus. God bless you. You have a great day and a great week. Bye-bye.